Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Beta and this is The Simple Budget. Here on my channel I show you how my family is using the zero-based budgeting method in order to get out of debt and simplify our financial life. If that sounds like content that you're interested in, I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button and join our little crew here. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. Well, hi everyone and happy bonus bonus content Thursday. I have been so excited to film this video for you. It is the long awaited debt update. I only do these once a quarter because I think it's actually impactful to see how much of a difference can be made inside of three months. Not that a difference can't be made inside of one month of being disciplined and um, paying money towards your debt. But I also think it's important to see that progress can be made just inside of a quarter of a year that feels really fulfilling and uplifting and encouraging you to keep moving forward with um, the moves that you're making in your financial life. Um, I always say, you know, at the beginning of all of my videos that we are um, using the zero-based budgeting method in order to get out of debt and simplify our financial life. And one of the reasons why I chose the simple budget and just the, kind of the tagline, simplify your financial life, is because actually budgets can be complicated and messy. If you've spent any time watching my channel, um, especially my budget with me, um, we have a variety of different categories that we budget for. And it doesn't always feel simple and it doesn't always look simple. Um, but ultimately, discipline is simple. Continually disciplining yourself and continually maintaining your finances actually simplifies much more than just your financial life. Um, and so that's sort of where that was born from, um, that even though budgets can be long and have many categories and the process itself feels chaotic, if you maintain the discipline of it, you're really simplifying things in your life because every purchase has a purpose, every purchase has a category, every purchase is meaningful, and that in my way of thinking, is the ultimate in financial simplicity because you're not complicating things by bringing things into your home or um, spending money on vacations that you don't have to spend um, because when you are in debt, that is chaos. That is not simplicity. So anyways, I do love to go on a tangent, but I feel pretty passionately about this because in this, you know, year and a quarter of um, the work of paying down our debt, I've had a real shift in the way that I think about how I spend money, where I spend money, um, and what used to be important to me in terms of status because I think a lot of us get caught in that trap of, well, if I have this or if I'm wearing that or if this is what my car looks like or my house looks like or whatever, um, it will appear as though I have some status and some level of importance. And I think American culture is probably uniquely positioned to enable that sort of behavior. Um, maybe just Western culture in general, not just American culture. But um, that is where I've noticed the biggest shift in my thinking is that these things are just things and they don't matter. And bogging yourself down with debt in order to acquire these things that don't matter actually keeps you further and further away from the life that maybe you would really like to have. So for us, um, that life is a simple one. I want a little bit of land um, that maybe I can pass down to my kids, and I want to live off of that land as much as I can. 
and I want my kids to have a peaceful, sort of simple existence in what can oftentimes feel like a very chaotic world. And those things that I want, I think probably more than anything now, um, are not achievable when you are not financially free. So anyways, that's what all of this progress is for, for us. So that's why we're doing this work. That's why we're you know, making this happen so that we can eventually get to that place where we're living a life that feels more authentic to us. So anyways, whatever your goals are, whatever thing that motivates you, allow that to keep motivating you forward, even when things get difficult and even when things feel frustrating and even when you feel like you're not making as much progress as maybe you thought you were or as as much progress as you would like to. Um, every step forward counts. Every little bit that you're moving the needle matters in the long run. So just remember that. It's why um, we even throw change at debt because those little, the pennies add up. The pennies add up, guys. It just, they do. So anyways, now that I've um, gotten a little preachy with you today, i um, Let's chat about something completely nonsensical for a minute. My nail color. Um, this is a fun one for me because it is, as per usual, it was a KL polish color, but I'm pretty sure she moved it over to her new brand because um, she is a huge Friends fan, just like me. And I'm wondering if some of you will be able to guess um, the name of the color just based off of the bubblegum pink color of it. So I'm going to give you a second to shout at the screen before, if you're a Friends fan, the name of this color is just going to warm your heart. The name is Gum Would Be Perfection. So just a brief explanation behind what that means. Chandler, who was played by um, Matthew Perry, um, was trapped in an ATM vestibule with Jill Goodacre. Now, I realize that there's a percentage of my audience that is maybe too young to understand anything of what I just said. <laughs> Jill Goodacre was a, I think, um, a Sports Illustrated swimsuit model in the like early, late 80s, early 90s, I think. Anyways, um, an ATM vestibule is, oh, those are our tornado sirens. We are not having a tornado. They just test them to make sure that they're not broken, which is nice. So they're working. Yay for us. It's actually a beautiful sunny day today, which is very welcome here. Anyways, so Chandler is trapped in this ATM vestibule with Joe Goodacre, and she asks if he would like some gum, and he's like, no, no thanks, I'm good. And then in his head, he's having this internal monologue, like, why would you say no to anything from Joe Goodacre? And like, he goes down this list of, even if she offers you, and I actually can't remember the line right now, but you take it, you know. So then after a little while, he goes, you know, on second thought, gum would be perfection. And then he you know, cringes at how awkward the phrase gum would be perfection is. So when she put out this color and she was like, it's such a bubblegum pink that I thought that the only proper name for it would be gum would be perfection. So I loved it and I snapped it up um, right away because I love a friend's reference anywhere I can find one. And um, she actually, I think she had a friend's line and I bought the entire thing because it just was too good. Um, so anyways, we're off on a, like a tangent on a tangent as I'm wont to do. And then also I decided to bring in my little houseplant today instead of having flowers on screen. I did buy some lovely little flowers yesterday from Trader Joe's, but, uh, well, not yesterday when you're watching this, several days ago when you're watching this, but I decided that my little houseplant here would, would be a lovely companion today for today's video. So anyways, I have rambled on long enough at this point about none of the things that we are here for. We are here today for our quarter two, no, quarter one, year two. Actually, I should probably say that the other way. Year two, quarter one, debt update. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bring in my, um, my budget binder here for you. So the binder itself, I will leave linked below as always. It's from a lovely group of ladies called Jumping Fox Designs. And I just loved the linen and floral 
it hit all my high points for me. Um, and then the planner itself is actually made by me. It is always linked below in my Etsy shop. Um, I have it in a printable and a digital version. The digital version is an annual. The, um, the printable one is just for a month, but you can print it as many times as you need. So really it's also annual as well. Anyways, I'm gonna move into the debt section of my budget planner, a place we do not visit very often because again, I only do these once a quarter. And I'm just gonna, this is my debt list. This is what we started 2023 with. And um, you know, I'm just realizing I don't have my pen here. And actually, I'm probably going to zoom you guys in so that you can see this a little bit better. So I'll be back with a pen and a zoom. All right, y'all, here we go. So actually, I'm realizing now how many of you may not be familiar with what we refer to as the debt snowball method. So the debt snowball method is something that I heard about through Dave Ramsey. I'm not sure if it was coined by him, if it was something that he kind of created the process of, but he is who I've heard it from. A lot of what we do here on my channel is Dave Ramsey inspired. I am not one who follows exactly what he says precisely to the T, but we kind of follow mostly what his, his recommendations are um, for our method of paying down debt and just kind of handling our financial life in the future. So he um, uses a process called the baby steps and baby step one is saving up $1,000 in a mini emergency fund that, um, can be used in the event of essentially a small financial emergency in your life while you're paying down your debt. Um, and actually I'm going to go off on a brief tangent on that really quickly. I have heard a lot of different people saying that it is, um, an outdated concept that you need more than $1,000 in a mini emergency um, for a mini financial emergency. And um, I know that there are a variety of different thought process on, processes on this, but my husband and I have found over the course of time that actually the $1,000 is plenty because the other thing that he recommends, he was like, if you know that you know the end of your job or something is imminent, you need to stop paying your debt and stop building your sinking funds and just stockpile cash. But if you're following the um, zero-based budgeting method and you're doing cash stuffing, you're also saving for sinking funds. So like in our house, we're saving for car expenses and home maintenance expenses and Christmas. And there are a lot of sinking funds that we're putting money towards every single month that don't um, don't come about very often. And so actually the $1,000 emergency fund very quickly adds up to being your $1,000 emergency fund and other sinking funds that you're saving for. Because let's be honest here, if an emergency happens, you're taking every penny that you have available to you and putting it toward that. Like your future financial goals, goals, or not distant future, but near future financial goals don't really matter much in the event of a, of a mini emergency that you have to empty your $1,000 emergency fund for. So um, I don't really understand the, I think the criticism of his $1,000 and calling it outdated is from people who are on the outside looking in who don't really understand this entire budgeting method that he encourages you toward. Because as you're saving for important life sinking funds, you're actually building up a mini buffer emergency fund as well. So you may start with $1,000, but after a couple of months of saving for sinking funds, you actually have more than that. You have probably double or even triple that. Um, I know that a few months into it, we had like $3,000 in our sinking funds and the $1,000 savings um, in our emergency fund. So just understand that the $1,000 savings that your or emergency fund that you're saving for um, is only going to be $1,000 for a very short period of time if you're following the rest of his financial guidance because you should be saving for other sinking funds every single month that come up throughout the year. So actually, 
I mean, and I don't even know what our number is at this point. If Mr. Simple was here, it's my husband. If you happen to be new to my channel, everybody calls him Mr. Simple. Um, he would be able to tell you how much actual like liquid cash we have available to us at any given moment right now. Um, if we needed to completely deplete all of our sinking funds. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, a lot, I mean, you can criticize, I've, I certainly think there's a fair number of things to criticize Dave Ramsey for, but calling the $1,000 emergency fund antiquated is to me the perspective of somebody who doesn't understand the entire system because you're never just sitting on $1,000 and spending all of the rest of your money. That's not how this works. Um, so anyway, <laughs> That was a tangent, but I just felt the need to kind of clarify that because if you're sitting there and you've you've heard that criticism of him and you've never, this is like maybe the first you're hearing of the uh, baby steps and the $1,000 emergency fund and even you are thinking like that's not enough money to put aside in the event of an emergency. Trust me when I tell you that you will continue to build up money, just kind of general savings in your account. Um, and in your envelopes while you're saving for your general life fund sinking funds. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and then baby step number two is to start paying down your bet debt using the debt snowball method. Um, I understand that there are two approaches to handling your debt, debt snowball and debt avalanche. I don't know of any others, but I'm sure many of you guys out there do. The debt snowball is you list all of your debts in order from smallest balance to largest balance. You put, um, you pay the minimums on each of them, and then you put any extra money that you have in your budget every single month toward the smallest balance so that you can pay that off really quickly and then the reason why it's the snowball is because then you're taking the minimum payment that you're paying to your smallest balance debt and the extra money that you were putting on your smallest balance debt and you are rolling that down to your your next higher highest balance. So in the case of us, we had a Chase credit card um, that had a $4,762.35 balance. Our second debt was our car, and that was $8,319.61. Our next was a 401k loan that we had taken out a few years ago. The balance on that was $19,373.94. And then our big mamba jamba was um, our visa bill, and that one had a starting balance of $26,491.40. Um, we... I think the total of this was just slightly under $59,000. So where I say that my husband and I kind of deviated um, here and there from Dave Ramsey's recommendations and methods was because we mostly, we mostly did the snowball method, but we've also kind of jumped into the avalanche method from here and there, here and there where we felt like it would really benefit us. So for example, this was our smallest balance, but we actually aggressively paid money toward our visa for a couple months because this was really close to the, um, I can never think of this word, the max, the, like the max limit to the limit. This was really close to the credit limit. And so because we were so close to the credit limit, we decided to take like a couple of months on this one and throw our extra money here just to bring it down away from the limit. Um, and then we went back into paying this one off. Um, and actually, you know what, let me just roll since we've gone over the list of debts, I'm just going to roll into the explanation of what happened. So, um, in January, so our minimum payment on this one was like a hundred dollars. And in January we paid four nineteen ninety, And then by March we had actually paid this one off. So even though in February, we didn't throw really, I mean, we threw just like a little bit of extra money at this one. We put $247.41. This was of last year, by the way, January, February, and March of 2023. Um, my husband had a magic month in the month of March. That means he was paid, he had one extra pay period in the month. Um, and so that extra money we put toward this one and we just completely wiped this one out. So um, I was, I put total paid here because I think it's, it's good for you to see what your money, like 
how much extra money you're paying at interest. So even though our starting balance was $4,762.35, to pay this off completely, we paid $4,980.66. So interest matters. Um, and that's why people make the argument for the avalanche method, which is where you put, you ignore the balance and you put all of your extra money toward your highest interest debt. Um, and I certainly see the argument for that. Um, there's also like a psychological argument for doing the snowball method because um, being able to wipe out your smaller debts faster has a psychological benefit of like, you know, encouraging you to keep moving forward. Um, I personally am just sort of like, do whatever works best for you. If you love that psychological benefit of being able to pay off the small debts, and watching them completely go down to zero and then snowball into the bigger things, go for it. If the avalanche method works best for you and you just are sort of like, you know what, I want to wipe out this interest, um, do it. I've heard um, Dave Ramsey, what I'm going to call enthusiasts, say that paying the interest is your stupid tax. I'm not sure if he's actually said that. Certainly sounds like something he would say. Um, I think that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. If you can eliminate how much interest you're paying and how quickly, you should absolutely do that. The stupid tax is in the fact that you've accrued this much debt. Let's not keep adding stupid on top of stupid. Don't continually punish yourself for past mistakes that you've made. You're still, when you're paying down debt, you're still living in your mistakes. So there's no need to beat the dead horse. Just pay off the freaking debt however fast you need to do it. And whatever method you want to choose, do it that way. There's no one, you know, what did my dad used to say? There's more than one way to skin a cat. I don't know why we're skinning cats, but I appreciate the sentiment. So don't get mired down in the details of those sorts of things. I appreciate wisdom and guidance from people. If the snowball method works for you, that's fantastic. If the avalanche method works for you, that's fantastic. If you do what Mr. Simple and I did and do both in different times when it benefits you the most, do that too. Just pay down your debt. That's really the moral of the story at the end of the day. Don't stupid tax yourself. Don't like whip yourself. Don't, there's no need to, to, to sit there and, and stew in your own guilt. We're not doing that anymore. We're paying down the debt and we're moving forward. So... Apparently, I just feel, felt the need to preach about that one. Um, anyways, so that's what happened. We paid this one off pretty quickly. Um, and just for those of you who may be new to my channel and you're like, how do you pay that off that fast? Um, my husband and I have anywhere from $2,000 to $2,500 of wiggle room extra in our budget every single month. Um, the reason for that is because... We very, very wisely, and I'm not even sure what either of us was thinking, frankly, because it was the wisest we've been in years. Um, we didn't buy a house that was at the top of our capabilities. Um, we didn't feel comfortable doing that uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, and so our mortgage is not like maxed out on what we could afford. Um, and when we started this, we only had one car payment instead of you know having two cars or two car payments. So. We have made some reasonably wisdomous financial choices along the way, um, and not maxing out our capability of debt was probably the best thing that we've done because it really does give us a lot of wiggle room in our budget. Um, and that is one area where I actually wholeheartedly agree with Dave Ramsey. If you're starting this process out and you don't have wiggle room in your budget because you just have stuff, you need to sell it. You need to sell it and you, especially if you have like two car payments, you need to sell a car and find a cheaper one. Um, if your mortgage is weighing you down, you need to seriously consider maybe even selling your house. I know that he says that that's like a last resort thing, but if you're maxed out on your mortgage, you have to really consider whether or not staying in it is the most beneficial th thing for you in the long run. Because, you know, being evicted from a home, having a home taken away from you, that's not, that's not going to be good for you um, financially in the future. So... Um, anyways, moving right along. Um, next up after that, we moved along to our car. Um, and we didn't start putting extra money at our car until June of last year because, like I said, we kind of went back and forth between um, all kinds of stuff. Like we went back and forth between the snowball method and the avalanche method. And so because we were so concerned about our credit card with that super high balance, we focused a lot of our effort there whenever we could. Um, and so, But last June, we made a concerted effort. Um, instead of 
just paying the minimum monthly payment, which was three ten eighty four. Um, we started throwing extra money at it. So in June, it got just over sixteen hundred. In July, it got just over nineteen hundred. In August, it got two thousand. And then in September, we paid it off with a final payment of one thousand three hundred and sixty five dollars and fourteen cents. So um, we were so encouraged after this one. And then it was so funny because if you've been following my channel for a while, um, I've since since we paid this off, I've been in two car accidents in this car. Thank the Lord, they were minor little like fender bender things. But I was like, yo, why is everybody trying to kill you after you pay your car off? So anyway, after September, we paid off the car. And then we actually, this is where we reverted to the snowball method because, or the, I'm sorry, the avalanche method. Because this 401k loan, um, even though, you know, it's still like it's, we're, while we're paying it back, the interest gets paid back into our 401k, which is fantastic. Um, it is still, you know, preventing us from like maxing out. Well, we, we did actually do the Dave Ramsey recommendation of pausing all of your contributions to your retirement so that you can focus your, eff your efforts on paying your debt down, which is, I know, another controversial you know, piece of guidance from his, but we felt pretty strongly that that was the way to go for us, not telling you what to do. But um, anyways, um, even though, you know, this $12,000, we would love to have this like back in our 401k. At this point, we decided to switch over to, or I'm sorry, after we paid off our car, we decided that the next best thing would be to put all of our effort at our credit card that had the $26,000 balance to start 2023 because um, that one had actually a pretty high interest rate. And so we were just like, let's just focus our efforts on that one and and just keep paying the minimum on our um on our 401k loan. So that's exactly what we did. So in January, this um, this payment comes out, it's actually split in two and it comes out every pay period. So we paid 447.96 in the month of January and that took the balance that had been, um, at the end of the year, we ended a balance of, uh, with a balance of $13,800.84. And that brought down the balance um, at the end of January to $13,368.87. And then um, in February, again, four forty seven ninety six. The balance was twelve thousand nine hundred and thirty six dollars. And then at the um, at March, we paid a total of four forty seven ninety six, and that brought our uh, balance down to twelve thousand five hundred and three dollars and thirteen cents. So we're just still plugging along on this one. Um, it's definitely you know. It makes an impact because the interest gets paid back to us. And so it works out really nicely this way. Um, a 401k loan is not an answer to a debt problem. But, you know, now that we're paying down our debt, we're not accruing any more debt. Um, the needle moves on this one pretty quickly and it's very, very encouraging. So that is that with the 401k loan. Okay, so because I am extra, I went and... Um, got some stuff to cover this up because obviously we, you know, I love to keep a secret. Um, so just to refresh everyone's memory, we started 2023 with this Visa credit card with a balance of $26,491.40. And like I mentioned to you earlier, this was really, really, really close to the credit limit. And so it kind of altered how we followed the debt snowball method initially. So if you see um, what we accomplished here in 2023, um, the first month we paid just over the minimum payment, so $250. And then after that, in February, we decided to put $1,000 on this one just so we could inch it a little bit further away from the max limit. And then in March, we went back to just putting $250 on it. But then after we paid off our, our first credit card, um, so the smaller balance one, the $4,000 balance one, we actually turned a lot of our attention to this one because then we thought, you know what, let's get it under 20K. Um, so we're going to put all of our extra money on this credit card so that we can get the balance under $20,000 and then we will go back to the snowball method and pay our car off. So that's what we did. Um, 
In April, we put just over $1,400. In May, we did just over $1,600. And then in June, we paid $3,122.15. And so that brought our balance under 20,000. So it was $19,972.91. Then we just went on a normal pay schedule for this one and we just decided to put $300 a month at it. So we did 300 in July, 300 in August, and then we had a magic month or my husband had a magic month in September. And so because of that, we he had an extra pay period. And so we were able to pay the car off and then put the remaining extra or extra money from the magic month at this credit card. So we left September with a balance of this of $16,827.46. And then whenever we could, um, we would just... I, I couldn't even tell you what the thinking was because like in October, we just paid a $300 payment. But then in November, we put $4,400 on it. And then in December, we did $2,400. Um, I cannot remember why we did that. I'm trying to remember. Oh, I know why. Because after September, we paid the car off. So I'm not sure why we did $300 in October because it should have been more than this. Maybe we decided to do something else with it. I can't even remember. But that's why in November and December, we put 4400 and 2400 because it was extra money that we had that we were just throwing at this credit card because we were really trying to get this balance down. So we'd started 2023 with a $26,000 balance and we ended 2023 with an $18,000 balance. So that was really encouraging for us to move into this year with and... um. We were, we were really excited about that actually. And um, which lets you know like how much debt we were in and how high this balance was because $18,000 is a frightening number when it comes to debt, but it was just exciting for us. And then um, as I've mentioned on the channel before, um, I don't even remember what in what other videos I discussed this with, but um, my... Well, I'll just, so my dad passed away two years ago. Um, it was somewhat, uh, it was somewhat, not somewhat, it was unexpected and it was sort of out of the blue. Um, and his father was still alive when he died. So his, his mother had died like a year or two before my dad did, but his dad was still alive. And then um, I'm trying to think. Maybe maybe a full year after my dad died, my grandfather died. So he was like 86. Um, and we, unbeknownst to us, um, my dad's children were considered his next of kin, not my mom, when it comes to like inheritance. And I don't know all of the legal jargon and all of that kind of stuff, but, um, um, so my grandfather, despite being depression era and being super, super poor, um, he and my grandmother were very responsible financially and they had, you know, a cute little house in, in Maryland on, um, a few acres and they hadn't, you know, paid it off or anything, but, you know, they had equity in their home and, um, even though he was, born super duper poor, he was able to die and leave some things for his children, leave some money for his children. So um, the portion of the estate that was going to go to my dad um, was then actually given to my dad's children. So I'm one of, I'm the oldest of five kids. And so my dad's portion of the estate was split among the five of us. And um, I didn't feel good about that, frankly. Um, and I talked to Mr. Simple about it and I just said, I don't want this money. I want my mom to have this money because it should go to her. Um, my parents were married for 40 years. They were very happily married. Um, there's no reason why my mom shouldn't have gotten this money. I understand from a legal standpoint, you know, maybe, maybe it shouldn't have gone to my mom. I don't know, but um, certainly from what I felt to be a moral and an emotional standpoint, I really wanted that money to go to my mom. Um, and so Mr. Simple was like, whatever you feel, um, if that's what you want to do, then yeah, let's, let's, you know, give that money to your mom. 
And despite all of my best efforts and my lengthy conversation and my very, very stubborn nature, my mom refused to take the money from any of us. Um, she wanted us to all have it. She wanted us, she was like, what she said to me exactly was put it in your savings account and move back home. So um, I'm originally from Delaware, if um, you are new here and you've never heard me mention that before. Um, and so, um, yeah, so I tried. <laughs> I tried and she refused. So um, we kept the money and um, I th I know I've mentioned it on my channel before because we stuffed a little bit. I ended up peeling away a small portion of what was um, ours in that estate money and putting it towards some sinking funds and vacation and just stuff like that that I felt like needed a little bit of a buffer. And then the rest of it we put at this credit card. So um, it wasn't enough to pay the credit card off, but it was certainly enough to pay the credit card down. I'm gonna just move my candle here because, um, yeah. So, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull this away. Um, so we, we did able, we were able to pay off the credit card in February which is very, very exciting. But because of the um, money from my grandfather's estate in January, we were able to put um, 7,000. Oh, I lied to you here, actually. We finished, 20, we finished 2023 with a balance under $10,000. The balance was $9,999.33. We dropped the balance by uh, 16492 um, we paid a total of 18631 That's what this was. I was like, wait, how did we pay $7,000 from 18000 That doesn't make any sense. We finished the year under $10,000, which was a personal goal of Mr. Simples. He was like, I want to get this under $10,000. I want to get this under $10,000. So that's what we did. Um, but so after the estate money came in for my grandfather and we applied it to this credit card, um, it was a total between what we had already planned to pay in January and the estate money. It was $7,822.25. And that meant that our remaining balance was $2,258.43. And, um, you know, if you have been watching our budget with me is our goal is to put between $2,300 and $2,500 a month extra at our debt, just depending on what kind of wiggle room we have. And so in February, we paid $2,258.43 to pay this credit card off. So we took it from a $26,000 balance starting in 2023 to a zero balance in February of 2024. So we were so, so, so happy about that progress. Um, our goal was to pay this off actually in April of this year, but obviously because of my grandfather's money, um, you know, we paid it off sooner than anticipated. And we were, we're just, we're so beside ourselves happy about this one. Um, and then actually after this, we were like, oh my gosh, we don't have any more credit card debt. Like it's gone. All of it is still wrapped up in our 401k. So that means that the only remaining debt that we have is this 401k loan that we are paying on. And the reason why it doesn't look like this got any extra money in the month of March is because technically it didn't. So the website that hosts the 401k and like the loan payoff and all that sort of stuff is so antiquated that when Mr. Simple tried putting an extra payment at it in March, it was like, thank you for your payment. It will hit on April something, something. And we were like, what? All right, so my battery died when I was explaining this to you guys. But um, basically what we've decided to do since the website is so old and doesn't process payments in the say, same way that like, you know, modern and private banks do, um, we are going to hold all of our extra money for this one in our high yield savings account until we have the payoff amount. And then we're going to 
just pay it off in one lump sum. So this will still be getting its minimum monthly payment because the minimum monthly payment, like I mentioned before, um, it comes out every pay period. So we don't have a choice on that one. It is automatically deducted. Um, so it will still be getting its mon minimum monthly payment. It just won't be getting any extra until we have the money to pay it off. And we were like, you know what? We're going to accrue interest on it in our high yield savings account. And then we'll just pay it off in one lump sum since their website is 145,000 years old. Um, because it's run by the government. And we all know that, you know, that probably means that some politicians, uncles, cousins, best friend developed the website. And so it can be a piece of garbage, but because they know the politician, that's the website that gets used. Anyway, it wouldn't be a simple budget video if I didn't rant and rave about my disdain for the government. So <laughs> here we find ourselves. Anyways, I hope that this video brought some inspo your way. I hope that you're feeling encouraged and just know that um, every little bit counts. Every step forward makes a difference. Every little move to make the needle move in the right direction is a positive step forward. Um, I know that it's difficult when you're paying down debt and there's so many other things that you can think of that you could be using your money for, um, but you you've already made those poor choices. So it's time to pay those off and move forward with a different plan, a different financial plan that gets you out of debt, keeps you out of debt, and you just discipline yourself moving forward to do good things for yourself. Your financial health actually impacts your mental health. So make good choices. <sighs> So that's it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind and leave me a comment down below saying hi. And please tell us your debt stories, your debt payoff stories or your debt pay down stories. Um, have you paid off a, a debt recently that was really bothering you or are you just moving closer toward being able to do that? Let's really encourage one another um, here because this is the kind of stuff that, you know, we build all of our life dreams on is being able to be financially well. So let's encourage each other towards that. And, um, yeah, so that's going to do it for this week's of this week's bonus content. Um, tomorrow I will be back here with you guys with our regular weekly check-in. Um, and if you are new, that is just basically where we reconcile the last week of non-cash purchases because we're cash stuffers around here. So if we spend in a non-cash way, we have to return that money to the bank. So that's what we'll be doing tomorrow. And who knows, there's probably going to be a Veda story or three in the process of that video as well. So anyways, I look forward to being back here with you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.